Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. We are right back on the road build. If you caught the previous video, you know exactly where we're at. But in case you didn't, we recently acquired some more property next door, which gave us better creek access as far as a creek crossing to get to the other side of the property. So we're in the process of just roughing a road in, getting some stuff cleared, getting some benches cut through, making it so we can get equipment and trucks to the other side of the creek, and making it set up for a future road whenever we decide to put more rental cabins back here on this section of property. So today what we're gonna start with is kind of getting some of these piles consolidated. I'm just gonna do it by hand because honestly it's gonna be quicker than it is trying to maneuver it all with the backhoe. Just... We're just gonna run the 372. It's way overkill power wise, but taking a page out of Buck and Billy Ray's book, it means I don't have to bend over quite as much to cut this stuff up. So we'll get it cut up, we'll get it tossed into piles, we'll get it burning, and then we can take the backhoe and start pushing across the other side of the creek, which I'm pretty excited about. Caught a rock. Yeah, so that's... That's something. Heck of a rock finder, honestly. You wouldn't believe how fast it finds rocks. Anywho, we're gonna touch it up a little bit. Not too bad. See if we can go ahead and get these fellers to cook. Still rocking the G Fuel. No, it's on this side. The G Fuel, by the way. It's their powdered energy drink mix that I've been using. I like it. It's good stuff. Well, we got a couple piles, so we might as well go ahead and see if we can't get these two piles cooking, and then we'll just move down the line and keep making a few piles as we go. I think it'll work out fine. I don't have a whole lot of propane left. That one's cooking fine on its own. Let that cook down and we'll just keep throwing there together. This one's not doing quite as well, but it's got the heat in there. She'll work her way up through. All right, let's see if this old rig will start for me. A little fuel, a little power, out of gear. Oh dear. Yeah, she's gonna need a little extra juice, I believe. A little extra juice. Hopefully my juice has the juice. So those are cleaned up and put into piles now as well. Too late in the day to get those lit. It's about two o'clock, so we're gonna let those other ones cook down, throw them in one more time this evening, and they'll be fine. We'll have to do those another day. Obviously, we got the backhoe. It means we're gonna do some digging. I 
don't know that I can get up or down that. Yeah, that's a problem. We got a problem. <laughs> Tell you what I need to do. All right, hold on. I'm not saying it's a great idea. What do I need to do? Let's do this. Let's do that. And I'll bench out over there. Oh, I gotta move you guys for sure. So I'm pretty much up out of the hole. I'm still sitting on an incline there. But you can see we're at a spot over here where I can start running with the hill instead of up the hill. So we'll kind of start wrapping our way around and leveling it out through here. I need to double check and make sure, see where my next marker is. Make sure I'm not going too askew here. I'll be back, I'll be right back. Be right back, hold on. We gotta try to get this fella pulled down first it's kind of in my way for getting the rest of these trees out. There we go. Very nice. Nope. I don't know why we're bringing that back with us. Okay.
All right, it's a new day, and this week, huge temperature change again. We're gonna be back up into the upper 60s, lower 70s, sun shining, and I'm loving it. I need to measure something real quick. But I also wanna talk about in this video, the dangers of using a backhoe, because I've had several comments, and they are all very valid comments. I've also had several people email me and tell me, hey, I bought a backhoe, which I think is great, but there's some things about backhoes that a fellow's got to watch out for. I don't have a tape measure. I just have a grade rod handy. Somebody suggested making a rock bridge out of all this. And uh, I can't get it out of my head now. You know, we did the timber bridge, which was an absolute hoot. It was a good old time. Perfect. That's about 10 feet. And I just think a fellow would have a blast building a rock bridge. I mean, why not? We don't have a whole heck of a lot else going on right now. Well. We don't have a whole heck of a lot of money to fund any of the other projects right now is what I'm saying. And, and rock is relatively free except for the hospital deductible when it goes wrong. Let's see here. I don't have anything big enough to move that. We're going to have to go Egyptian style on this, I believe. Man, a guy wants to shove a 20-ton bottle jack under that and just see if she moves at all. Okay, hold on. We're getting distracted here. Hold on. Let's face it. Life is inherently dangerous. I mean, there's only a 5-inch yellow line a $50 tie rod in and two drivers that have to be paying attention to stop you from having a 120 mile an hour head-on collision every time you pass another car. Life is inherently dangerous, but we add the danger level, or we up it, whenever we introduce heavy equipment. Especially older heavy equipment that has a few quart, like a leaky power steering system. We got tires that hold air long enough for you to get through the day, but never long enough for you to start your morning off quickly. All kinds of old bolts and old pins and stuff that's just, well, let's be frank about it, barely hanging on anymore. That doesn't mean we still can't be productive with this piece of equipment. Now, I've been running equipment for probably 12 years, but disclosure, it's all kind of been on a part-time basis. And even when I worked for Dirt Perfect, working for him full-time, running equipment was still only part of my job. We were pouring footers, doing concrete ICF, driving trucks, and that kind of thing. So even when I had a full-time gig in excavation, it was still only a part-time task. My point is, I've got a little experience with equipment, but not enough to consider myself a professional. I'm gonna point some things out while we're running, things that I look out for and things that make me nervous, because I don't want it to be a secret. Running old equipment that is the jack of all trades, it's not made for one specialty kind of thing, on the side of a hill, clearing trees with old tires and old bolts, it's sketch at best. We'll put it at like a 7.4 on the sketch level. So if you do buy a backhoe, or you do think, hey, that fella does it, so can I, at least you're getting into it with some realistic expectations and maybe a little bit more safety conscious. All right, cutting that tree should save me a little fight. Get these swung out of the way now a little easier. about a backhoe, well, they're just an awkward machine. With a track hoe, you've got a good solid steel undercarriage, a whole lot of weight, good solid tracks. Definitely starting to get into some sandstone here. Nothing wrong with that though. So one thing I want you to watch, here's, here's probably the biggest thing about working a backhoe on the side of a hill like this. You gotta think, in an excavator, when you take that bucket and you swing, your counterweight 
stays with you as you swing. So it's always opposing wherever your load's at. That's not the case on a backhoe, obviously. Anytime I swing, I'm relying solely on an outrigger to keep me from flopping over. I don't have a counterweight opposing that action, if that makes sense. Every time I swing a bucket of dirt or rock, if I swing over there and a chunk of clay gets stuck in that bucket and my timing gets thrown off because of it, or I'm throwing a tree or whatever and it gets snagged and I think it's gonna come out and I put myself in a vulnerable spot and it doesn't come out of that bucket, we're relying on that outrigger solely to keep me from flopping down the hill. So what I want you to do, watch that outrigger. Watch that downhill outrigger as we swing. And also notice, as I'm doing it, again, I'm not giving you advice and this isn't a how-to, so if you do something and you get hurt, that's gonna be on you. Here's your disclaimer. But I'm just showing you the way I do it. But I just want you to notice how low I keep my bucket to the ground whenever I'm swinging on that downhill side. It's almost acting like a kickstand as I'm swinging it. That way if something does break or something gives, at least my bucket's low and whatever momentum it carries gets stopped pretty quick versus my bucket being way up high and that thing going over. So I got just a little further. We're pretty much gonna come right to about here. And then after that, I'll spin you around. But it's pretty wide open from here on out. And we can figure out where we want this thing to go down the line. The main thing is we'll have access for larger equipment over to this side. There are tons of rocks, by the way. Sandstone rocks like this. The whole ground's just, whole ground's just sprinkled with them. There's also some very suspicious rock piles. I'll show you one. Probably never need to move that. Probably not, probably just, you know, it's a good spot for it. I don't think we need to, don't need to see what's under there. Good chance it's just a pile of rocks. This used to maybe be a field or something back in the day and they dumped a bunch of rocks down here to get them out of the field. But there's other possibilities and you know, I just, I think we can leave that be. Ow, that's a big rock.
That looks pretty good into there. I wanna try something real quick. See this big fella here? I wonder if I could, uh, that one, that one right there. I wanna see if we can pop that up out. I'm just, I'm just entertaining my curiosity at this point. Well, I don't know why I thought that was gonna be hard. I want to flip it up on this bank for a little erosion control. Watch out, hopefully not on you. Like a, like a big old chunk of riprap. There we go. Yeah. That'll work. Very nice indeed. Oh, wow. We're used to seeing a ton of fossils in the limestone here, but can you make these out? They're all over this piece. Very cool. Here's my idea, I choose that big chunk there as a bridge deck. Now I can't lift that with that, but I might be able to scooch it. But I gotta get these bigger rocks off top of it first because I don't know how far it goes that way. If I can move it an inch, I can move it a mile. Well, I got that one down here moved and she's probably, well, that's every bit of 16 inches thick and there's no sign of a crack here. In fact, just judging by the way the dirt looks, I'd say that probably goes that way another 10 feet. I don't think this is gonna be the one for us. It's big, it's a good size, but I don't think we can move it. That being said, I would like to give this one here a little shake. Just see if she's loose. If I can move it an inch, I can move it a mile. Just takes me a little time. Let's just see if she wiggles, that's all. Oh, she wiggles. Yeah, she's a wiggler. She's got movement. I think that's gonna be our rock. I think that's gonna be the one. Well, I said it earlier, if I can move it an inch, I can move it a mile, and we've got several inches right there. She's chalked up with some rocks on your end. Kind of cool looking underneath, and right here, Oh, perfect, good straight stick to use. Here is my next purchase point. I can put the bottom of the bucket here, the teeth under there, and I'm using the bucket. Oh, how do I wanna 
um, let's see, push down on the stick and curl the bucket in. It's like the claw of a hammer. I'm just prying it up. So I'll just have to keep prying my way up. And uh, I, I honestly don't know how I'm going to get up there. I don't. There's a full moment of honesty with you. I've got no clue. But I got a whole bunch of pulleys and cables and come alongs and a little bit of brain power. I'm pretty sure we can figure something out. Definitely making good progress. We are down the hill, we are across the creek, and we are pushed out on the opposite side of where we want to get to. Now comes the fun part, getting everything polished up and actually making it look like a decent road. So next video, because the weather's looking good in the 10 day forecast, we're gonna be right back on this. We're gonna try to get that rock flopped up here and get this bridge built across. I say bridge, put your expectations down a couple notches. It's more gonna be like a big box culvert made out of rocks that we have. So we got plenty of flow, but more flow than I'd get with a regular culvert because this thing does flow really hard whenever we get hard rains wide enough and strong enough to carry the backhoe across. So if you like what you're doing, I hope you like what you're doing. If you like what we're doing, make sure you stay subscribed to the channel, have your notifications turned on so you know next time we post a video, which should be every Thursday and Monday, unless sometimes life happens, and that way you can see how this project turns out. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm having a good time with it. I hope you're having a good time watching it, and I just hope you're having a good time doing whatever it is you're doing today. I have other things to do, like go fix a Ford Ranger. I'll catch you guys on the next one.